Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Perfect People by Peter James. So this is a thriller novel. Peter James is known as the author of the Roy Gray series of crime novels. And as I said, this is more of a thriller. It's about 600 pages long, but the layout and stuff isn't too bad, and he has quite short chapters as well. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to start by reading you the blurb, and then we're going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll come back to you when I finish reading this to give you my final thoughts. So, the blurb. John and Naomi Clayson are grieving the death of their four-year-old son from a rare genetic disorder. They desperately want another child, but when they find out that they are both carriers of a rogue gene, they realise the odds of their next child contracting the same disease are high. Then they hear about geneticist Dr. Leo Detour. He has methods that can spare them the heartache of ever losing another child to any disease, even if his methods are more than they can afford. At his clinic is where their nightmare begins. They should have realised something was wrong when they saw the list. Choices of eye colour, hair, sporting abilities. They can literally design their child. Now it's too late to turn back. Naomi is pregnant, and already something is badly wrong. There's actually a super long paragraph here I'm not going to read, but at the end it says something about upsetting the scientific community by saying he believed all prizes were tarnished by politics. That's kind of, that's kind of how I upset the bookish community by saying that I think literature prizes are a load of rubbish. But uh, The two characters are talking about sucking each other's toes. It says, you haven't sucked my toes for a long time. Remember you used to do that? You used to suck mine too, she grinned. We're getting too middle-aged. What is this obsession with toe sucking? Toes are weird. I do not want to suck a toe. I do not want to have my toes sucked. And then, of course, we get some twists. So, um, I actually, I'm not going to even tell you what the twists are. But basically, they start to realise that what, uh, what this doctor has promised them might not be... Uh, all that it seems. Oh, There's a great quote I liked here from uh, Dr. Johnson. Language is a dialect with an army and a navy. And then these twins, they get super creepy. They start, they can talk perfect English backwards with every fourth letter missing as a kind of cipher. So it's like above and beyond, you know, the creepy thing of kid, of twins having their own language and stuff. This is like their own cipher. Oh yeah, so then, then the kids start playing chess. Um, like the dad is doing uh, an email chess correspondence and the kids take over and start playing for him And now I'm out of space on my camera apparently So there's like an adversary in this very much in the vein of what you get in the Dan Brown novels really um, Where there's someone out to stop them and it says it Says here which I thought was quite cool One of the rules for disciples was never to carry a return ticket If you fell into the hands of the enemy let them have as little information as possible So they always traveled everywhere on um, you know a single ticket and then the kids, they, they give their pet gerbils a post-mortem and they look up Grey's Anatomy online. Which I, I, I always like this intertextuality of when one book mentions another book, you know? And then the kids are away from their family for a bit and uh, they get reunited and the dad goes, No kiss for daddy. Kissing leads to sex, Luke said, dismissively turning back to the screen. This kid's like three. And uh, then Phoebe says, We don't kiss. We don't want to be abused. And we get a reference to the cause being on TV singing, Thunder Only Happens When It's Raining. I love the cause, they're great. And then uh, the kid gives this speech, which I thought was quite, quite cool, you know. Then Phoebe said, everyone seems to be afraid of genetics. We read that people are saying that Mother Nature isn't great, but she's better than the alternatives. Oh yes, hello, what planet are you on? Mother Nature has dominated Homo sapiens since the species first appeared 500,000 years ago. And what a screw up. If Mother Nature was a political leader, she should have been executed for genocide. If she was chief executive officer of a multinational company, she'd have been fired for incompetence. Why not give science a chance at the helm? Is science, in the right hands, going to make an even bigger mess? And then there's this big twist at the end, which I don't really want to spoil, but I did think it was quite cool. The only thing I would say is at the end, it felt to me like super out of the blue, purely because I didn't realise that this much of the book is actually a sample of... A sample of dead simple no not dead yet whatever one of one of his other books which i've already read so yeah i was expecting like 60 more pages and then it was just like end but all in all i did enjoy perfect people i think if you're into either like dan brown or thrillers or a mixture of both you'll probably like this i will say honestly i would recommend peter james's roy grace books above these but uh yeah i mean if it sounds like your kind of thing definitely check it out and i did enjoy the themes of uh, genetics and designer babies and stuff uh, so overall, I gave it a sort of a 3.75 out of 5. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Perfect People by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Where are you going, Biggie?